Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following along. The journey continues. And I enjoy company along with my journey. And I appreciate your interactions, your comments, your suggestions. This is a pen many have asked about. I did order one six weeks ago, but it somehow is stuck in China and has not made it to me here. So after I realized that that one didn't seem to be making it, and I'm in contact with the seller, we'll see what we'll work out. I ordered this one, and if you have ordered from Bobby, you may recognize the case. I ordered this from Etsy, so you'll see where I bought it. And the price is pretty reasonable. The first one I bought was, was more money by, by a few dollars, but this one I think is priced just right. So let's open it up and take a look at the pen. Yep, it's a Moonman T1. First impressions, it feels pretty weighty in the hand, which I think it's a lot in the cap. We'll give you the breakdown of the weights. But it just has that good feel to it. Both the anodized aluminum and this barrel you have an interesting little inlay there with the Moonman logo. Kind of similar to uh, some German manufacturers do that. And, and also some Taiwanese manufacturers tend to put a little insert into the top of the cap. It's something that's been around for a while. There's nice branding there on the cap. So you're not going to forget what model this is. And this is the green color. And I like it. Because it's not a really intense green. It's more like a blue green, sea green, or eh, maybe in a teal family. So let's count the unscrewing of the cap. If it's nice and tight, there's one, there's two, oh, a little bit over two and a half turns, and that's nice. And we see that excellent Moonman nib, which I've enjoyed in my C1 and my M600s. That uh, section feels good in the hand. It is a little bit more slippery than um, the acrylic piece here in the barrel. And it's something that we'll see how it works over time. Can you post it? Uh, we'll look again later on, but there's a nice plastic insert there, so it it posts nice. It's, it's secure, but um, not something I would do unless I had to do something with the cap, because it does pretty much change the balance and not in a way that I'm comfortable with or enjoy. But it, it's a good sized pen, so it fits good in the hand without posting it. Piston fill, and this piston works as nice as any piston I've ever used. Very smooth. So uh, the travel, I think, is a little limited, but then, you know, there's a whole, I think, engineering challenge with designing a piston fill to maximize capacity and still be live within aesthetics of a normal size pen, which this one is. So we're going to dive into this one a little bit more deeply as, as we go through the video. We'll compare it to some other pens, which it may resemble. And then we're going to put some ink in it and see if that Moonman nib writes as well as it has on other Moonman pens that I have. Here we have the T1 partially disassembled. So I pulled out the, or unscrewed the uh, nib assembly, and it's your Moonman number six or a 35 millimeter nib that we find on the C1 and a number of other pens like the M600. What I like is this has those two um, O-rings on it not all these assemblies seem to come with two o-rings but i think that's a good thing to seal and if you needed to clean out the pen and you had some stubborn ink removing this works fine because that's an open to the barrel so you could easily get in there and clean you know q-tip rolled up paper towel or whatever you could use some type of wrench I'll try to get those measurements, but that just unscrews. You can see the threads there through the clear section. So overall, I think this is an extremely well put together pen. We're going to use the LED to check out the inside of the cap. I've rearranged some lighting to that should facilitate this. Let's give it a shot. 
So what I notice is a nice seamless plastic insert in that cap. Plastic threads there that mess up to the metal threads on the section. So I'm fine with that. Some people think that there could be wear on the plastic with the metal, but unless you're going to cross thread it, and I haven't noticed any challenges with that in this pen. While we're here without being inked up, I just wanted to explore. That's as far down as the piston goes. And to me, it almost looks like that's designed as somewhat of an ink window. Maybe at one point in time, this barrel might be of a different color. I don't know. It's a strange design. You know, the piston should go all the way down because when you pull up, that's just going to be air there. And it doesn't go up any further than that. There's no click in place. It does feel very good at the tight fit. So I don't think it's going to unscrew on its own. It turns very easily. Um, it feels as good as any type of piston filler pen that I've used. So in my cleaning, I tried to pull out the nib and feed and it wouldn't come out. I used what I consider to be reasonable effort. I'm not that concerned because I have a number of Moon Man nib assemblies. And this O-ring does have a tendency to come off. So you got to be careful with these O-rings. Thankfully, I have a large supply of uh, spare O-rings. So if I do lose any, it's easy to replace. There are flat spots there when you screw the piston all the way down that would be used to unscrew the piston assembly. The first thing you think about is using a Twisby wrench, which also works on Pelicans, but that end of the piston is too big. It will not fit. This is seven millimeters here. This is 7.45 millimeters. So about a half a millimeter difference. It also equilibrates to 1964. And I do have a 1964 wrench. But the challenge is, is this is too thick to fit in there. So the easy solution would be to enlarge this by another half a millimeter so it would fit. And then I could remove the piston. But that's a project for another day. So one may ask what pens would I compare this to. And I brought out my two fine writing international pens. So basically they share a few design elements, not a lot. I mean, you have your cap and blind cap of the same material. These are have that trait in common. These are cartridge converter or eyedropper. This one's piston fill only, so that's one of the changes. Here we have a clip, here we have no clip, but there is a roll stop. This one has no clip, but it has that faceted cap, which tends to keep the pen from rolling away. And I just threw in this wing sung here just to show uh, inexpensive design that's piston fill. Has similar design traits. This piston's not as well engineered because you can see uh, there's a lot less space here. This end cap is bigger, so a lot of that piston goes up into the end cap, or here the end cap is smaller. Here the end cap matches the clearness of the barrel. You know, again, they're not all identical, but you know, this is a uh, classic design that's been around for a long time, and this is one variation on it. So posted, they take on another dimension. None of these pens are good for posting. They get very long and the balance changes. And this golden armor, that cap's not going to stay on. It doesn't come into place here. That plastic liner inside gives you a very secure posting. And this is a relatively light cap. And it does post more deeply than the Planet series of fine writing. And here's just here for reference. Let's uh, take a look at the section and the nib. I like the Moon Man because it has a very classic section, a good length. These threads are fine. There's really no step up, so you can hold it anywhere. And this uh, anodized aluminum finish is not slippery. I mean, it's not the same as a resin feel, but I, I think it's more than adequate. All these three have equivalent of number six nibs. Here's that black one with that nice logo from Fine Writing. And here's a 
a broad nib. I mean, we, if you look at my review on this one, which I'll post a link to it, you'll find that I had some challenges, but the nib writes okay now. And this one has that Lamy style nib, and it's certainly, it's not as impressive as the nibs in the other pens. This section is also that Lamy style section, which I'm not a fan of. These two have a nice girth to them, and they're fairly short. This one has a little concavity to it. This one's fairly flat, but overall, I find any of these four pens can write very well. I did finally receive the original T1 that I ordered uh, over six weeks ago. And that's the blue one here. So I thought it'd be interesting just to compare the colors, those that may be torn between the blue and the green. Um, here they are. I think I have some decent light coming in, so we should be able to see the difference between those two colors. The blue is not a clean, clean blue, nor is the green a clean green from my understanding of colors. I think we need to put a white background behind it just to make things look a little different. So that's the green one and the blue one. I'm not interested in the other colors. So I think we've explored this enough time to put nib to paper. So I did order a number of Pen BBS inks from Venice, and this one I ordered. A, it's that new style bottle. It's the larger size, 35 milliliters, so more than uh, double what was in the smaller bottle. Similar type of cap, just a nice bottle, and I think you can guess that this is a pretty blue ink. Here's the color card. Maybe a little bit of sheen there. If we look at the chromatography, it's just a pure blue. I don't see any other colors in there. So let's put this blue ink in the blue T1. So I wanted to show that's how much ink I got up with the first draw. So we're going to go down and back up again and let's see how much fuller it will become with the second draw. As you can see, I haven't cleaned off the section or nib because we're going to dip it back in the bottle. So the second draw added a fairly decent amount of ink, so I'm pleased with that fill. If I wanted a full fill, I would, uh, you know, do eyedropper from this end, but then you're going to lose ink saturating the feed. So I think this is about as good a fill, full as your, fill as you're going to get. I've been writing with the pen for a little bit and first impressions are the most lasting and the first impressions of writing with this pen is like whoa so the cap comes off with you know two and a half turns it's just at that edge of being too many this fits fine in the hand unposted it's not a pen that I would post but if you have to it does post and it makes for a long pen, but the balance is not bad. That cap is pretty light. will give you those weights. And you will unscrew the piston if you don't just pull the cap off after you post it. A la Twisby. The biggest gripe I have about this pen is the anodized aluminum in the section is a little slippery. It's not extremely slippery, but it's more slippery than I would like. You don't feel the threads. There's no real step ups. You can hold it wherever you want. And actually, it's easier to hold on the threads because they provide a little friction. So I'm going to make my suggestion to pen makers that have anodized aluminum sections. Put some texture on it. That would be all you need to do. And that pen would go from a great pen to a phenomenal pen. So I will give you those dimensions of the section. It's just on the, it's about as small as I like a section to be. Nice flare out at the end. But let's put nib to paper.
So you heard the nib on paper. And this nib is three checks, all the pluses you can give it. It's a great nib. As you can see, it's very wet. And this Pen BBS ink has blown me away. It is really a nice blue ink. So one of my viewers commented about how they're, you know, expanding their pen collection, wanting to get into different pens, and talked about a gold nib. So this writes as good as any nib I have ever used. I hate to put that in perspective, but that's my experiences sitting here with a pen in my hand putting ink on paper. I love this. It's great. So I've loved other Moon Man nibs like this, but this one is just phenomenal. Maybe it's a later edition. Maybe they've done some little bit of tuning to the tipping or whatever, but great flow. Maybe it's this ink in this pen because we've talked before about certain ink and pen combos are just excellent. So now we had to rate this pen. Originally I was going to give it a 9.1 because I gave the Pen BBS 500 a 9.2. I'm going to give this a 9.5 with two checks for the nib and one check for the design, engineering, construction. It's very well made and it's functional. And yes, it has aesthetic elements to it, which I find very enjoyable. But primarily, to me, you buy pens to write with, and this is a great pen to write with. I could go on and on and on about this nib and this ink and in this pen, but we all have a limited amount of time in our day. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. May you have many great writing experiences. May you have an extreme amount of pleasure and satisfaction from putting a nib on paper. Ah, this is great. So we've reached the end of this video. There'll be more to follow. I have the Moon Man 600 sitting in the wings, along with that Jin Hao Centennial. And initially, I'm very happy. I continue to use my Pen BBS 500 in Aurora. Great nib on that pen too, but this nib is better. So with that, we're going to say bye for now. And as we talked about it, there'll be a lot of more videos to follow. And this is going to be in my everyday carry for a long time. <laughs>